time for you to master the Azure Vault Mythic Plus dungeon. And this is the complete guide for it, including everything you need to know. Possibilities, what to dodge, what to interrupt, packs, routes, and everything in between. So make sure you watch until the end because you need it, goddammit. And also, by the way, these videos uh, take really long time to make and involve a lot of work. And if you want to see this as a proper series on our channel, maybe consider becoming a patron is not required it's not demanded but it does help out a lot because these videos on our channel don't really perform that well so a patron support may guarantee us uh, you know the proper amount of resources and time to make this a proper series all right thank you very much now let's get into it there are several routes you can take in this dungeon, some requiring shroud or invis skips, some simply skipping an entire area by jumping off platforms. For today's video, we will focus on a simple, straightforward one which you can easily do in bugs. You can find a link to it in the description below. As you start the dungeon, you will have to battle Conjured Lashers, and they may not seem like much, but if left uninterrupted, they will kill your party really quickly. So pull as many packs as your party can handle, interrupting or stunning the Mystic Vapors cast. This spell will give you dispellable stacks, which stack up really fast if you fail to interrupt them, and it makes your party take large amounts of damage. You can avoid pulling the Shrieking Whelp by not entering the circle surrounding him. If he gets in combat with you, he will start shrieking and awaken the inactive mobs it patrols around. You can CC and kill him before his cast is over, but more often than not, it will go through in a pug. So just avoid it. For our route today, we will not be pulling these mobs, but we will discuss their abilities a bit later in this guide when we encounter them again before the second boss. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. The next mob you will encounter is an arcane tender. The tree will channel erratic growth on a player and try to turn them into a sprout, stunning them, so make sure to interrupt it. If the cast happens to go through, your healer can dispel this unless he's the one who turned it to a plant. But beware! If another player is close to the CC'd player when he gets dispelled, it will jump to them and round and round the stuns will go. So maybe just interrupt it from the start, please? Don't forget to dodge the wild eruption swirlies and the puddles that come from the tenders as well. After clearing these packs, jump down here at the balcony and kill the tenders here to activate the boss. The saplings are not very dangerous when alive, but when they die, they explode in a big snappy burst swirly, so make sure to move out of it. Once the tenders are dead, Laymore will spawn. You may be under the impression that this boss is a tree, but do not be fooled. This bad boy is a stealthy stone elemental with a tree for a hat, who stomps pretty hard if you haven't cleared all the ley line sprouts around him. First off, the boss does an infused strike on your tank, which deals large amounts of arcane damage and leaves a dot, so use a defensive when it's coming. Secondly, have your tank position the boss so that his frontal cone attack, erupting fissure, hits the center sprouts and a couple on the edge of the circle as well. Don't stand in the puddle under the sprouts, as it obviously deals damage. The tank can also dodge the frontal once the boss starts casting it. The sprouts that get destroyed will spawn saplings you will have to cleave down during the fight. Just like the ones before the boss, they are not very dangerous, but make sure to move out of the swirly they leave on the floor when they die. The next important attack to watch out for is Explosive Brand. This will create an AoE circle around the boss, Push back all the players and place a circle around every member of the party, which will deal damage but will also destroy sprouts upon expiring, so be sure to spread around the circle and try to destroy as many sprouts as you can with this. Preferably all of them! As mentioned before, every destroyed tree will spawn a sapling which needs to be cleaved down. Soon after this attack, the boss will do a consuming stomp which will consume whichever sprouts survive and deal massive AoE damage to the entire party. The more sprouts you have up, the more this stomp is going to hurt, so just try to clear all of them beforehand. The sprouts that are consumed by the stomp no longer spawn ads. Did you kill the boss? Congrats! Now enjoy the walk! <laughs> The next mobs we encounter down the stairs are a pack of whelps, which again we can skip by waiting for the circles around them to become smaller and just walk through the safe area. 
If someone pulls them, they will awaken the elementals behind them which will remain active for the remainder of the dungeon if you happen to wipe to them. So you will need to kill them either way on your way back. But let's assume you skipped, as this is not that difficult. Look, even I can do it! The next pack is formed of two arcane elementals which try to put you to sleep. Literally! They cast Waking Bane, which will make you fall asleep. It is dispellable, but better to interrupt it. They also cast Arcane Bolts, but those are not as important. Next to the pack in the corner, at the green marker, you can see a tome which is usable by evokers and scribes. If they click this, they will get a 2 minute buff which will allow them to reverse some traps we will find later on. Once the elementals are dead, or invisibility skip if you want to pull bigger elsewhere, click the book on the balcony to take you to the central rings in the crystal chambers here. While you are here, your party will receive random buffs to help you in your fight with the trash. The buffs can grant your party a good and bad effect, so watch out for them. For our route, we go left and get these elementals with the unstable curator. Now, if you look on the floor, you may also notice some circular runes. These are traps, which, if activated under your feet, will CC you for the longest time ever. Remember the tome your friends picked up before the balcony? They can use it on these traps and reverse them to CC the mobs instead of your party. It's great for AoE interrupts if you happen to lack some. Unfortunately, you can only use each tome one time. Back to our trash, the curator has two spells you will need to deal with. Forbidden Knowledge, which is a long channel that will spawn blue swirlies which you need to dodge, and Heavy Tome, which deals damage, so interrupt when you can. The patrol also has a Rune Seal Keeper, which does icy bindings. In combination with the curator's forbidden knowledge, this is a very dangerous spell because it will root your entire party in place so you won't be able to dodge the swirlies. So interrupt the icy bitings! If you happen to get rooted though, the debuff is dispellable and several classes can escape it. Druids can shapeshift, hunters can disengage if they have the posse talent, and rogues can vanish, and so on and so forth. Moving on the next pack, we also encounter a Crystal Fury. This is one of the mobs of wells we skipped earlier would awaken. They have a dangerous frontal cone, piercing shards, which can be stunned or cc'd. It gets a bit rough when you have a whole pack of them though, so be careful with your pulls and rotate stuns and cc's. Their piercing shards also have a dot on the targets, they hit if not cc'd, so watch out for it. The last type of mob we encounter on this ring is the Crystal Thrasher, which is also one of the well packs we skipped before. It does a crystalline rupture which you should dodge. It deals a lot of damage to players within 15 yards and it roots them. Once you clear all the stationary packs of this ring, a new book will spawn on the inside ring which will take you one level lower to the next ring. Here we have a couple of the same trash mobs as before and a couple of new ones. The arcane elementals need to have their waking banes interrupted and keepers with their icy bindings and the new bobs arcane constructs cast conjured barrier gaining a shield and arcane bash dealing frontal damage and pushing back anyone caught in the frontal this is quite dangerous given you are on a floating platform astral attendants cast unstable power which spawns swirlies on the floor and hit for a large amount of damage if you stand in them luckily their attack can be cc'd this ring doesn't need to be cleared for the transport book to appear. For our route, we just clear the left side of it and continue on to the next room towards the second boss. The two vault guards at the floor cast Ice Cutter, which hurt the tank, so pop a defensive. You can also stun the cast. Most of the other trash inside the room we already discussed. Soul Keepers and Attendants, which are a deadly combination if the icy bindings are not interrupted. Patrolling around the room is also Scale Bay Lieutenant, whose brilliant scales protect him against magic by 30%. He has two stacks to look out for, the Ice Cutter, which hurts the tank, and Spell Frost Breath, a frontal cone which should be pointed away from the group. We only clear one side of the room and pull the boss, Azure Blade there, for various purposes which we we'll shall discuss momentarily. So, pull the boss close to the right side wall here so that when he summons draconic images they will not be close to the other packs and accidentally pull them. If you have a DK, they should be able to grip every image in melee. Make sure to interrupt the illusionary bolts from these ads, cause they really hurt. 
Cleave them down next to the boss, but make sure the boss does not face them as he has a frontal attack, Arcane Cleave, which will kill your melees. So just keep him a bit sideways. When the adds die, they will spawn swirlies on the floor, which obviously you need to dodge. The boss will also turn towards a party member and cast Ancient Orb, another frontal attack which you will need to dodge as it deals large amounts of damage and pushes you back. When the boss runs out of energy, he will run to the center of the room and cast Overwhelming Energy, becoming immune to damage and spawning four illusions around him. The illusions need to be killed quickly so the boss returns to the normal phase. They will also spawn swirlies when they die. And on top of this, you also have to dodge the orbs coming from the boss. The fight just repeats once he goes back to the normal phase. Now we mentioned at the start to tank him near the wall for another reason. That reason is that when the boss is low health but also low energy, he may go for another intermission phase, which will prolong the fight by quite a lot. So if you keep him close to the wall, he will have a longer run towards the middle of the room, giving you more time to kill him before entering the intermission. This has just been maxing, but it could be the difference between a timed key and a depleted key sometimes. Once the boss is dead, skip the rest of the trash to here, there's plenty of room and continue to the next level of the dungeon. Now as you go down the stairs, you will encounter your first Draconid Breaker, which you can pull in the next room with the Tarasek Looters and the Null Magic Horns Walks. But before that, send your scribe or evoker to pick up the tome next to the breaker at the entrance to the room and CC these bad boys with the rune on the floor if they get too mean to you. The breaker has a shoulder slam ability when he marks a player and charges into them, knocking them back and dealing damage. You can dodge this if you have fast reflexes, but you can also line of sight this and have him cast it on someone else instead. <laughs> or just vanish if you're a rogue. Be careful with this later on, as it can knock you off the balcony. Their other ability is Bestial Roar, which does AoE damage in a 30 yard radius, which you can outrange. The looters do a tear flesh attack inflicting physical damage and leaving a stacking bleed effect on your tank. The frogs do a null stomp, leaping to a target in range, which you need to dodge. You can stay closer in melee so they can be cleaved down more easily, but then you cannot outrange the Bestial Roar. Eh, win some, lose some. Once the frogs are all in melee, try to keep them CC'd so they don't leap away anymore. After killing the last two breakers on the balcony here, the next boss follows. This is also the balcony where you end up jumping down from the ring if you decide to use the other route where you pull the whelps, which skips the entire area between the second and the third boss. Telash Greywing is the third boss and it's very similar to the Major Lord Urom from the Oculus Dungeon in Wrath of the Lich King. On his platform, you will notice three circular runes which will be safe areas later on. So, first of all, make sure to pull him anywhere else to not drop bad stuff on them. His first ability is Frost Bomb. He will place icy rings on all party members which will drop a puddle of ice after a few seconds. These deal large amounts of damage and stay on the floor for a long time, so make sure to drop them on the edges of the platform to not lock anyone out of a clear path and move out of them quickly. They also grow over time. Icy Devastator is a focused attack on a player dealing damage to them and everyone around them, so be alone when you are focused by it and pop a defensive. Some classes can cancel this ability. Pain Death works for example, or Shadow Melt, or Vanish for Rogues. At 100 energy, the boss will fly to the middle of the platform and start casting Absolute Zero, a large AoE attack which will also root you. This is the moment when you want to run inside of the runes we mentioned earlier, as they will now activate and reduce your damage taken by 50% and also cancel the rune effects. Once you use a rune, it will break for the next two absolute zero attacks, so you need to keep moving around the platform to the next runes if the fight takes too long. The ice patches will also clear out by the time you reach them again, so don't worry about placing them as far back as possible to save room. Once Greywing is dead, you can take the next book to go down to the last boss. You can also jump down, but you'll probably die or pull the boss early. Some pet classes happen to reset this boss. I'm looking at you, Army of the Dead, as their pets just drop down while you fly and pull and reset the boss, or worse, they just pull him.
Umbral Skull is a boss that gets worse the longer it's alive. We recommend you start off with your tank taunting him from an edge and then pull him as close to the walls as possible. You can even walk up the walls or leap or get wave available as this will make things easier for some tank mechanics later on. The nasty part about this boss fight is that moving will give you stacks of oppressive miasma, up to 10 stacks, slowing your movement speed up to 60%. Druids can shapeshift out, hunters can disengage the stacks off, Tiger's Lust works, and the freedom and so on. You can also dispel it, but in general, just try not to move too much. You can make great use of the Thundering buff here as it will cancel out the speed reduction, so don't clear it earlier than needed. Not to mention you want the big deeps and heals it provides, right? Dragon Strike is a tank attack, which deals arcane damage and leaves a dot. Some classes like monks and warriors can spell reflect this. Crystalline Roar is a frontal breath pointed at a party member. Just dodge it, yo! When he reaches 100 energy, he will do an arcane eruption which spawns crackling vortexes at random locations around the room, which deal damage to whoever is standing them, so move out. The boss will also spawn hardened crystals all around. This will explode at the end of their fracture cast, dealing damage to the group, so you want to kill them off quickly. They also leave a hard-hitting, stackable dot, which becomes really hard to heal, and if you stack a couple of them, it's pretty much a wipe. This is one of the reasons you pull the boss to the edge of the room. The more stuffed he is in the wall, the closer together the crystals will be for cleaving down and they will spawn in an 180 degrees angle around the boss instead of a 360 degree angle. Unleashed Destruction deals party-wide damage and pushes you back, so healers try to top off your party members before this goes off. As the fight progresses, the crackling vortexes spawned by the arcane eruption will form into arcane orbs which will slowly try to catch up with your party. They seem to have a preference in tanks and healers, but they also seem to like people who move a lot. We're not sure what their main dish is, but if they're after you, don't let them reach you as they deal a lot of damage. This is the other reason you want your tank to go all the way up to the edge of the room here. The orbs will have a really hard time reaching him there, as they can't roll up very well. Now don't think you're 100% safe there though, the orbs will eventually find their way to you and you may need to reposition, but this place will buy you some valuable time. And once you've done this, you've conquered the Azure Vault. Now you know everything there is to know to get it done in time and get that sweet loot and get that sweet score as well. Now if you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments. The feedback is really, really important for us to maybe keep on making this uh, series of videos. And also, like if you want to support it, check the Patreon as I said in the beginning. It's not required. At the end of the day, we're all super pleased here that you watched it that you clicked it, you, you put a little heart on it or like it or whatever. So thank you for watching. We shall see you in the next one. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be one next week. Bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wild. Still, I play wild. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wild. Still, I play wild. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wild.